I want you to tell us first how you got it onto the screen because it just seems so improbable that even a character as big as Molly could get the support and the cooperation and the interest of everybody to make that film. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. Um, I am going to fess up. I really did not know of Molly Ivins. I grew up in New York and L.A., and uh, by the time I was of age to read her columns, I was out here. I had gone to school out here in college. And so I, like I said, I was, you know, grew up on the left coast and the other left coast. And at, so I really didn't know who she was. I think I saw her on Letterman in the 90s, and I knew she had dubbed George W. Bush Shrub the Little Bush, which I thought was hilarious. So I really didn't know who she was. My friend, who became my producing partner, James Egan, and I wanted to make a film together for a while. And so we'd been looking for something, so I'm going to pass that part of it over to James because he really is the guy who got this all started. Thank you, Janice, and thank you all for coming this afternoon for us. It means so much to us when you make a documentary to have an audience. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> thank you so much for being here. It, it took us close to seven years to get this film made, but it all started with the Angle sisters, not related to Janice, who... Uh, Allison was a friend of mine when I was teaching at USC, and she had seen all my films, and she said, you have to come see my play. I said, oh, God, she wrote a play. <laughs> and uh, so I went, and uh, Red Hot Patriot with Kathleen Turner at the Geffen, and I, I laughed every minute. I was so moved, and, I, you know, I've made films about social activism, and I'd never heard of Molly Ivins. You know, how's that possible? And I went backstage, and I said to Kathleen Turner and, and to Allison, we got to make a documentary, and Kathleen Turner said, yes, yes, definitely do that. And so we got that early support, and I said to Janice, you've got to see this play. It's so important that, we're, that we get Molly's message out. And you went to the play. So, yeah, James <laughs> called, you have to go see this play, and I said, why? And he said, it's closing, don't ask, just go. So I went, and I laughed my ass off through the entire thing. And uh, that night I got home and I Googled her till 2 or 3 in the morning <laughs> and laughed You more. went down that rabbit hole I on YouTube. Oh, completely. <laughs> and I, I, j I couldn't believe it. And I, I called him up and I said, in the morning, I said, what's up? He said, nothing's been done. I said, nothing's been done. He said, nope. Meaning a documentary that was just this play. So uh, that was, we, we got through Allison Engel, we got to Molly's uh, gatekeeper, her chief of staff, Betsy Moon. And she uh, IMDB James and I and said, oh, they have credits there for real. And so we got, we, she put us in touch with the estate, which she left um, half of her estate to the Texas Observer and the other half to the ACLU. Yeah. yeah. And so in that period of waiting for the green light, we knew we needed a Texan. And so we both had a mutual friend. And as you can tell, <laughs> sh is she the Texan? <laughs> Kinda, you think? <laughs> Somebody has to represent, for God's sakes. Yeah. So we, James and I, called her, and 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 what did you, what did you, what did you, what do you tell? They people? gang pressed me. They <laughs> said you have 48 hours to say yes. I called them the next day, and I said I'm in. Let's do it. Well, did you like set that. out to to make a documentary about a journalist? who happened to be Molly Ive, or was it, was it singularly Molly, whether she'd been a journalist or a firefighter, would it have been the same kind of approach, just because of who she was? I set out to make a film about the person you see on this screen. She was larger than life, and it was all about who she is. She be happened to become a journalist. She fell naturally backwards into journalism. And because of who she is and what she had to say and her ability to speak truth to power, you know, it was her humor. Her humor is so brilliant and so... Um, but she had such a big heart. Also because she was a woman who um, uh, really came up at a time where it was called the snake pit. She broke the glass ceiling, as James always says, and that's true, she did break the glass ceiling. She, she was the first, um, with Kay Northcott, youngest, they were in their early 20s, the Texas Observer. Women weren't doing that. You know, she, she was really amazing, and I could not believe that nothing had been done on her. Now, if she had been a man doing what she did, something may have been done. So that really sparked me, um, and that's actually been comments on our social media. Sarah Bird, the writer, just actually wrote a whole piece about that. And, and wrote and about the fact that, that she had been forgotten, probably because she had been a woman in a certain yeah. position. And she poked 
at the powers that be. You know, she was nominated three times for a Pulitzer Prize and never got it. So there's, there's that element. It was who she was. I, um, as I dug deeper into who she was and really met so many people, um, there was just, her, the story needed to be told. It was dying to be told. For, for Jim and Carlisle, as you did the research and you shot the interviews and began your editing on this, did your sense of her as a personality change? Well, Monique Sabatoski, who is our editor, um, we were all at this place in the creative process, and Janice had, I mean, tirelessly put like how many hours of footage together to Carlisle? I mean, I, I mean uh, Janice. I edited. I edited this for f uh, about almost five, five and a half years, and then I, I, I needed an editor because I, I am an editor, but I needed distance, and um, so. Kate was originally going to do it with me, and she kept saying, why don't you do it yourself? I said, I, um, because I had, I had culled. It's a culling process. There was a mountain of material. It was, in, 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 I mean, I have a sure. seven, I have a seven, eight hour select reel of just Molly. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. I want to see the extras on that DVD. <laughs> so, so but, but from your point of view and from Carlisle's point of view, as you evolved through this process, and, and you came to know Molly as, you came to know her better, she became a different person to you? I think uh, for me, um, having been a political activist, like from age, you know, early on, lying in the streets during Vietnam and dealing and ta reading Who Rules America, and all the issues that we were facing then, and that we were willing to sacrifice so much for, her story to me embodies that that tr speaking out when you don't. Re believe that your voice matters. And I think everybody here who's an artist who's been through this with their families or with themselves, trusting their voice and knowing that it matters and doing whatever it takes to make sure that your voice is heard because you really do believe that this is true and we have to do something about it. She is so courageous speaking out about things that we're still dealing with today. And that's why we made the film. And I think that's when we look at the film over and over again, we see that truth to authority, to whoever it is that's oppressing you, that's, that's an important message now to youth, to everybody. We are, we, every one of us, our voices matter, and it's more important than ever that we let everybody know that and they everyone speak up the way Molly did. And that's what we're hoping people will get when they see the film. So it seems like what you wanted to do, too, with this film, you didn't want to end a discussion. You wanted to start one. Oh, we, I'm oh. going to take that one. Go, just go, moment, baby, just go. <laughs> Sorry, we did want to start a discussion and, and okay, Molly would still be writing columns and she'd still be saying, get out there and bang the pots and pans and raise hell. I mean, absolutely. And it was important to all of us that this was not just going to be a biopic. This We wanted this to be inspiring and get people talking. And that's what's, I mean, having come off of a, an amazing week in Houston last weekend in Austin and all across Texas, that is what's going on. I mean, people are bringing... They're seeing the film not once but twice, and the second time they're bringing their nieces and their nephews and their grandchildren and their kids, and they're talking, and that was our big goal, to call get to people it's talking. A call, it's a call to action. Molly tells us. She looks right at us and says, you know, they're, they're scared to death of us, and all those those faces on the front lines, that they, they're all young people. They're being handed the, to this, so, you know, it's really important that, you know, your children, your grandchildren, spread the word. And, and when I show it to them, I teach. I show it to my millennials. They wanted to. They want to know who is she. They're mm -hmm. totally fired up. They get it. Well, won't you thank these hellraisers for the film? <laughs>